want to change your experience of yourself in some way, shape, or form, or just up it a little bit. And do you all have uh, do you all have an image of that? Can you all imagine that reality? You can, otherwise you wouldn't have the idea of change. So you have some form of image, some vision, even if it's a very spiritual looking vision that doesn't include cars and houses, but includes a silent state of mind. That's not even really a change. It's the only thing that doesn't change. Do you have something? Do you have an image? So it can be a very spiritual thing, if you want to call it that. Or it can be a very mundane version of yourself, whatever you want, or a combination of both. But you have some sort of image of what you're, in a sense, working toward. Even if you see that as false, even if you see that as changing the small stuff, which doesn't matter. Even that is a change. Even that is a vision, the not wanting to change anything. So whatever the feeling is that you get from whatever it is you think you want, can you imagine that? So just see yourself, version of yourself, as you are now, but with a different experience of yourself. Can you imagine that? An experience that you long for, that your heart is thirsty for. What would be this version of yourself's history? Completely forget your own history. What did it experience yesterday? What did it do? What would it have done? What would it have felt? What would it have seen? What did it do one year ago? Remember, this is not the you you know. This is not your history. This is the history of a version of you that you desire to be. So what's the history of that version of yourself? What has it already experienced? What has it already encountered? What's your new past? Because remember, imagination is remote viewing a parallel existence, a parallel point of view of the one existence, a parallel universe, experience, reality. Imagination is remote viewing of parallel realities, coupled with some brain interpretations and symbols that you're familiar with. But nevertheless, you're tuning into an actual frequential or vibrational parallel version, a different alternate reality. That's what imagination is. You're looking into a parallel version of yourself. So knowing that, knowing that imagination is not just fantasy, it's actually the tuning fork that tunes in to different frequencies, like a radio transmitter. So in that parallel version, what did you do yesterday? What did you do today? What did you experience? What did you see? Who did you meet? Make this as vivid as you can, as playful as you can. And as real as you can, in a sense, like, what would you actually have experienced if you actually were completely 100% overwhelmingly so, that version of yourself, which you barely even dare to dream into existence? What if you could be the one that you actually want to be, but you don't give yourself permission to even think about? Because that would not be possible, would not be reasonable, would not be practical, would not be allowed, would not be loved, would not fit in. But if you could for a moment set all these practicalities aside, all these objections aside, and just overwhelmingly experience the version of yourself, the way you're experiencing yourself in the version you'd like to be. One of the quickest and most powerful ways of actually bringing that frequency, bringing that parallel reality into your experience is by changing your past. Because once you've changed your past, you don't have to do anything. You're already that version. So change your past. What did you do yesterday? In the version of yourself you'd really love to be. And imagine it, and you'll see that these experiences, what you may call like fake memory, become actual memories. And they start to, in a sense, take on a life of their own. They become very vivid. So imagine your past until it suddenly dawns on you that in some form, way, or shape, you've actually experienced these things. That actually is equally your past as whatever you remember from this timeline, in a sense. So imagine it until it's real. Fake it until you make it. And you'll see that, God damn, I actually, I actually, without fooling myself, have experienced that. On a level that was on a different frequency level than I was projecting myself on for a while. But nevertheless, now, that is actually my past. Imagine something that you maybe hope to experience in the future and instead place it in your past. What is it that you want in the future? 
What would be like awesome, amazing? What would be like a sure sign of you being your authentic, complete, well-being, perfect self? Now place that five years in your past. You're already way beyond that. Remember that experience that you, in your previous version, hoped for in the future. Remember it in your past. And remember, you're not fooling yourself. You're actually tuning into a parallel alternate reality of yourself. So this is as real as whatever memory you carry with you at this moment that you do believe in. It's as real. Again, I'm not kidding. You've already experienced many of these things. So memorize them. Remember that you've already had these experiences. Remember that you already have been doing and living the way you want it to be living. That's your new past. That's your actual history of the one that you are becoming now. You change your history. You change your past. You're effortlessly changing your present without trying hard to battle a past. Trying to change yourself in the now. Trying to adjust yourself in the now and make these minor adjustments. But feel like you're fighting an ocean of history, an ocean of doubt, an ocean of, yeah, but that can't be really me because I've never really done that before in that way. So first I need to do it for 10 years in order for me not to call myself a hypocrite anymore. In order for me to truly be worthy of this new state of being, of this new loving version of myself, I first need to have 10 years of being that before I can give myself permission to actually feel like I am that. Because I've hurt people even one week ago, so I cannot be that loving, compassionate, enlightened self. It wouldn't be right, it would be hypocritical. So imagine a different past. Tune into an alternate past. The past of the version of yourself that you already wish to be. Insert one memory that the version of yourself you wish to be would have already had many times. And that now in your, well not now, but in your 10 minutes ago version of yourself, you could only hope for. You could only dream of. But right now you've already experienced that. Imagine that. And see the shift that it brings about right now. See how it changes your awareness, your understanding of yourself in the moment. See the release that it brings, the relief, the peace, the trust, the confidence. The union with yourself, the love, and experiment with this throughout your everyday life. Whenever you find yourself stressing and hoping for something and then putting yourself down with ideas of unworthiness, simply imagine a different past altogether and fake it until you feel it's actually real. Now talking about yourself can become a little bit tricky at some point. People ask you for your history. <laughs> Say, which one? They go, what? <laughs> what you mean? Your history? Yeah, which me? <laughs> the one I am now, the one I was 10 minutes ago. My history changes all the time. Can we allow ourselves to actually experience ourselves in that way? That non-static, that non-linear. Can we give ourselves permission to do that? And you'll see that the objections that come up in your mind are all rooted in unworthiness. The idea I am inadequate, unworthy of love, unworthy of bliss, unworthy of what I desire. Even the idea like that's just not possible, you're just talking nonsense. Even that, even that addiction to physical reality being so real and everything else being less real is a form of putting ourselves down, keeping ourselves limited and small and in check just so that we'll be loved by people, we'll be moderately accepted. Because if we get a little bit crazy, if we go a little outside of the norm, then what will happen? We'll have to face our fears. And so let's call everybody else crazy. Everybody that lives their passion. Let's call them just a little bit crazy. But why not be a little bit crazy? It serves me well. 